Wouldn't it be helpful if your service dog could alert to escalating signs of anxiety or interrupt repetitive behaviors like leg shaking or nail biting? Hi, I'm Laura from Dog EU, and I'm a certified guide dog mobility instructor, service dog trainer, and trick trainer. In this video, I'm going to outline the general training protocol for training behavior interruptions and alerts. I'll go over important factors to consider and tips for choosing and training the alert behavior. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you about an exclusive offer I have just for you regarding one of my brand new service dog task training courses. So stay tuned. So why would we want to train behavior interruptions or alerting tasks? Training your dog to interrupt repetitive behaviors or alert to oncoming medical episodes like an escalating anxiety attack can make living with and managing your disability easier. Alerts like repetitive nose boops to the leg or a gentle chin rest interruption can help bring attention to repetitive or unwanted behaviors, bring the handler back to the present moment, or alert to an impending medical episode such as escalating anxiety or panic that has physical precursors. The goal of training this alert is to have your dog bring attention to or interrupt specific behaviors you do so that you can take action on or ask your dog to take action on your behalf. So what does that look like? The sequence of behaviors for an alert or interruption goes something like this. The human exhibits the human behavior we're looking to interrupt, such as leg shaking, and then the dog performs the alert behavior, such as a nose boop or chin rest in response to the human behavior. Then the human discontinues the behavior and reinforces the dog, or cues an additional behavior from the dog, like depressure therapy. So it goes human behavior, alert behavior, and then the human discontinuing that behavior and reinforcing the dog. Once they've learned the skill, it could be with food, praise, or petting. So how do we even train this behavior? Before we get started, it's important to note that you do not want to rush this process. There is no substitute for solid foundations, and slow is fast in dog training. Now before you start training, I highly recommend that you consult with your medical team to decide if this task aligns with your current health interventions or medical plan. While your doctors are not dog trainers, and you should not take any dog training advice from them, they will be able to help you assess what might be most helpful in mitigating a portion of your disability. We don't want to train anything that could be potentially damaging or run counter to your overall health plan. So go check with your doctor first. Clarity is key. We start by thinking about the behaviors that happen when you're having anxiety, a panic attack, or which behaviors you do that need interrupting. I call this the human behavior, or HB. Some examples are picking, leg shaking, scratching, covering hands with the face, heavy and quick breathing, and so many more. The dog needs to see a physical behavior that you want alerted to or interrupted in order to perform the interruption alert behavior. One way to better understand your physical precursors is to video yourself, or have a friend or partner video you before or during a medical episode, or describe to you what they see when you're in an anxiety-producing situation. This will help you target the exact behavior your dog should alert to, so that you can replicate it during training. Now I want to mention here that some dogs can pick up on changes in our body through scent. Scent-based training, while it's something I know how to do, is not my area of expertise, and that process is outside the scope of what we're going to be talking about today, as we're going to be focusing specifically on interrupting physical behavior patterns or events. If you're interested in training scent-based alerts, go to a professional with extensive experience in that particular skill set. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and head on down and boop that like button. Doing so lets others find this channel as well as lets me know that you want more videos like this. So to recap, before you start training with your dog, know what the specific behavior is that you want the dog to interrupt or alert to that the human's going to exhibit, called the human behavior. The dog will need to be able to notice a physical change in your behavior and alert. Video yourself if necessary and practice exhibiting that behavior for training purposes. Important note, I do not teach behavior interruptions for any behavior that could be harmful to the dog or put the dog's physical safety at risk, like cutting or hitting. In those cases, training a go find help or call for help behavior can be a better option. Choosing the alert behavior. The alert behavior should be annoying to you or noticeable enough that you'll pay attention. Some examples are a nose nudge, push, or two paws on your leg. The behavior should not be disruptive to the public. So for example, I tend to not teach barking as an alert unless there's a very specific reason to do so. Remember that the alert may need to be able to be performed whether you're sitting, standing, or laying down. So it'll need to be able to be performed in whatever situation your body is in when you're exhibiting that human behavior. 
When considering different alert behaviors, think about the entire picture, like whether or not you want your dog's paws on your leg if it's, say, wet outside. If you are choosing a nose boop, make sure the nose boop is very strong before moving on. Start with one strong boop and then build persistence to multiple persistent boops. If you want to learn more about how to train a strong and persistent nose boop, we'll talk about how you can learn that later in the video. If you choose a chin rest, make sure the chin rest is solid, has duration, and can be held in position even if the human behavior continues for several seconds before the handler notices, like with leg shaking. Now let's talk about training the alert behavior. Think about how you want to go about training. Would shaping, luring, or capturing be the best option? In most cases, shaping is a great option to create a fully independent behavior. If you're not familiar with these training techniques or want to learn more, definitely head over to my website, doggyu.com, to sign up for my totally free foundation training mini course, which will go over how to use these techniques to train your dog. Now, I cannot stress enough how important it is for your dog to know the alert behavior very solidly before progressing to the next step. Slow is fast in training, and if you have to go back to fully train this foundation step, the process will take longer overall and likely confuse your dog. So it pays to be thorough on doing these alert behaviors to fluency before moving on. Next, we're gonna choose a verbal cue for the alert behavior. So examples would be boop, touch, chin, or foot. Eventually, the cue for the dog doing the alert behavior will be the behavior the human exhibits. But first, we need to put the alert behavior on verbal cue so that the dog is able to quickly perform the alert behavior when verbally cued, no matter where they are. You'll want to generalize the verbally cued alerting behavior to different body positions and locations. Transferring the cue. Next, add in the human behavior that needs alerting or interrupting just prior to giving the verbal cue that the dog already knows and has generalized. So the new progression looks like this. Human behavior, such as leg shaking, then you give the verbal cue, such as boop, and then the dog does the alert behavior. Then the human stops the behavior and reinforces. As your dog gets more familiar with the human behavior, do the human behavior, wait one or two seconds to see if the dog does the alert behavior, and then jackpot with 10 pieces of food fed slowly over 20 seconds while you praise the heck out of your dog. Repeat until the dog consistently does the alert behavior when the human exhibits the chosen behavior. Now for the hard part, proofing and generalizing. Proof and generalize to all body positions, laying down, seated, standing, all of it, and to all likely distractions and situations. This means in and outside the home, with a friend, with other dogs present, using mobility aids, etc. Spending the time necessary to teach your dog that the alert can be done anywhere and under any condition is critical to having a really effective and useful service dog teammate. All right, so now that you know the general overview of what training this type of interruption or alert looks like, would you be interested in having a beginner-friendly step-by-step instructions with video examples all along the way so that you can train this at home? Well, you're in luck because I made a course just for you and it's on a deep pre-sale discount right now. This course is designed to take you from never having trained these types of tasks before to having a fully functional behavior interruption or alert out in public, even around distractions. You'll learn two different types of alerts, including the nose boop or press and the chin rest and how to build duration, pressure and persistence to those behaviors with straightforward and easy to follow instructions. Then you'll learn how to effectively pair those interruptions or alerts with the particular behavior you need your dog to alert to so that you can have an incredibly functional task that meets ADA standards. Throughout this course, I use multiple dogs that have never trained in these behaviors so you can see actual dogs learning in real time. You'll also see dogs that have precursor skills, but that have never applied them to this particular situation before. So you'll not only have the variety of dogs to learn from, but you'll also see troubleshooting videos when mistakes happen so that you'll know what to do when everything doesn't go as planned. In fact, you can see the cast of canines I'll be using right now on the course page by checking out the course preview, which is linked down below. You might even see a few dogs you recognize from this channel. Well, this course is completely beginner friendly and goes over everything from how to use a clicker to how to shape each step of the behavior. It's also a great course for advanced trainers and those professional trainers who are curious about adding service dog training to their list of services. And right now you can get the course at the pre-sale price of 35% off before the course is officially released in March. Not only that, if you're a Patreon member, you'll get an additional 20% off with my special Patreon exclusive promo code. So if you've been considering joining the DoggyU Patreon community, now's probably the time. 
but you have to purchase by March 1st to get these awesome discounts. You can find more details in the link down in the description below. So I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll consider enrolling in my new course. And if you like this video, you'll probably like this one too. So go ahead and click on it now. You all have an awesome day and happy trading.